Hey, what's going on guys? It's Sanson. So we're back with a brand new dashboard tutorial or Discord dashboard tutorial. And today I'm going to show you guys how to use access and refresh tokens. I'm sure you guys have heard of it before. It's very important to understand what they are whenever you're using OAuth 2 with any provider, either Discord, GitHub, LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, Instagram, whatever it is. So let's just say, for example, right now, our current application, we have our guilds listed, right? It works just fine. But what if I actually create a new Discord server? So I'm going to go ahead and create a new server. I'm going to call this test. Okay, so I just created a brand new server. Now, if I go ahead and if I refresh the page, you're going to notice it's not there. Okay, but if I actually re-log in, let's go ahead and uh, get that to work. You're going to notice now it's there. Okay, now what if I actually delete that server? So I get a delete the server well i'll do that later but you guys get the point if i delete the server in order for it to pop up we need to re-log in now the reason why that's happening it's not a bug but it's happening because we are getting the data from the database okay now there's no promise that the database data is not going to be stale okay there could be times where the database might have outdated data and the only way we can actually get the new data is by having the user re-log in, which is pretty annoying. So how do we fix this? Well, with access tokens, we can actually use the access token to fetch the updated guilds of the user. Okay, now all those guilds are from the Discord API, right? We're getting the data from the Discord API, and that is always going to be new, fresh data. It's not gonna be stale, it's not gonna be cached, new data. So we're going to use the access token to fetch that data. Now, here's the thing though. How do we actually get the access token? Well, let's first of all, let's go inside our backend code and let's go inside strategies, Discord JS. Okay. So with Passport, it actually handles all of the work for you. And there's this one function over here, access token. Okay. Refresh token profile done. So this is the function that takes in four parameters. And the first two parameters are the access and the refresh token. The second one or the third one is the profile. And the fourth one is a callback function. Now we haven't really done anything with the access token or the refresh token. So we need to actually use it. Now, here's the thing though. We actually don't want to one, just leave it like this. We need to actually save it to a database. Okay. Our database. Now we don't just want to save it though because if we save raw credentials like the access token or the refresh token, it's going to give us a lot of issues if we ever, if our database ever gets compromised. And especially you always want to be following good uh, practices when it comes to protecting sensitive info because you could get into a lot of trouble, okay? So I highly recommend you guys take all the necessary precautions when you're dealing with sensitive data like an access token or a refresh token. Same thing goes with passwords. So let's go ahead and do this. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and create a new schema. So I'm gonna call this OAuth2 credentials.js. And we're just going to import mongoose. And then we're going to go ahead and do const OAuth2 credentials. new mongoose schema okay so the next thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and define a couple fields so we're going to call this access token actually let me do that instead the type will be a string required will be true refresh token type will be a string Required will be true. And we'll also need the Discord ID, so that's the user ID, so we know whose credentials this belongs to. Okay, so what we want to do is we basically want to, oh, let's export this as well. Credentials, and then pass in the schema. Okay, so what we want to do is right over here in this callback function, because this is where we are authenticating the user. This is where we're, you know, checking to see if they're in the database. And then if they aren't, we're going to save them to the database. So if they are in the database, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and update their credentials. Okay, because they're because if they are in the database, then they should have these credentials. If they're not in the database, we're going to create a new record for both the user as well as the OAuth2 credentials. 
Okay, so we're going to go ahead and use a library called crypto-js. This is going to allow us to encrypt as well as decrypt our access and refresh tokens. You can also hash with this library as well. But let's go ahead and do this. Let's go into our terminal, so our project. We want to type npm i crypto-js. And we want to install it. Okay, very, very simple stuff. So we run it. So now that we've installed it, we can actually use the library. I'm going to go inside utils.js and I'm going to go ahead and import crypto JS and require crypto hyphen JS. So now once we have imported that, now notice that it was actually two libraries. There's crypto and there's crypto JS. Okay, the one that you want to import is obviously crypto JS. Crypto is the default uh, library for node. Okay, we're going to go ahead and create two functions encrypt and then decrypt. Okay, so these are going to be two uh, wrapper functions that are going to both take in a parameter. So for encrypt, we're going to take in the token. For decrypt, we're also going to take in the actual encrypted message. But we're just going to call it token for now. And for encrypt, what we want to do is we want to return crypto.js. So we're going to reference AES. This is the algorithm that we're going to use. Now, they actually have a bunch of different algorithms. You can go ahead and check it out. There's AES. There's DES. Okay. Um, but we're just going to use, like I said, we're going to use AES. Okay. And what we want to do is we want to reference the encrypt. We want to call the function encrypt. And we're going to pass in the token. So that's the message that we want to encrypt. And we need a secret passphrase. For now, I'm just going to type uh, test. Okay. But obviously, for an actual real application, you would want this to be something more secure. Okay. So just be very careful. Don't obviously use test, okay? Please don't because uh, I'll literally facepalm. I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes, okay? So let's go ahead and pass in these two functions uh, into this object so we can export it. Okay, so now we're going to go inside app.js. Now I'm going to just test this out just to show you guys how it works. So let's first import CryptoJS here. I'm just doing testing. You don't have to actually do this part. I just want to show you guys how it works before we even proceed. So you guys at least understand what's going on. So let's import those two functions from utils. utils. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do const message equals encrypt. And I'll pass in a token so or a message. So let's just say hello. Okay. So this is going to encrypt the message. Now, if we want to actually get the uh, actual message that was encrypted, we have to do message dot two string to get it. Okay, that's the actual uh, hash or not the hash, the uh, encrypted message. Okay, so let's uh, open up our logs and you can see we have this string over here. If I save, okay, there we go. Perfect. Okay, well now let's actually decrypt it. So let's say if we want to actually use our token, we need to decrypt it because this value, we don't know what this value is. Okay, we need to decrypt it. So to decrypt, we'll just do const m. So we'll call decrypt. Now we're going to pass in string. Now this is going to return not a string, but an object. Now to get the original text, we're going to go ahead and I'm just going to console log this m dot two string okay and we're going to reference crypto js which is the object the module that we imported okay as a property called enc which is i guess the encoder and then we're going to do utf8 by save see how we get the original string so that's very very simple okay so hopefully this whole thing makes sense all right so hopefully all of this makes sense so in the next video we're going to actually take what we just learned and we're going to put into practice. So what we want to do is we want to just take these access and refresh tokens, encrypt them, save it to the database. And then whenever we need it, we're going to retrieve it from the database, decrypt them, and then make API calls with it. Okay, so hopefully this video made sense. And I'll see you guys in my next one. Peace.